Hey, this is for, for you, Dean, to uh, respond to your question in <clears throat> Mentoring Men about what is an emotional affair. Um, and man, this is so hard to pin down, and and I'm not a big fan of the term because it's so Im ambiguous that a man who's experiencing it with his wife doing something else is hard is is having a hard time defining it. Uh, a man or woman involved in it can't really put their finger on necessarily what it is, and so maybe talking about what it does is a more effective thing, and so. What is life like for a man whose wife is doing this? What's the wife doing and, and what is the problem? And so we can call it emotional affair for this video, that's fine. But in an emotional affair, I would say the best way to characterize it is that um, relationship building energy and, and relationship connecting energy is leaving the relationship and going to a third party. Okay, so in this case, your wife is taking energy um, from herself and instead of directing it toward yourself, she's directing it towards this other man. And one of the things men really have to do to understand this effectively is stop measuring the woman by male standards and attributes. For example, we think about things like honor and integrity um, as, you know, generally good virtues, but for women, they're more like ideas. So a woman can have, you know, a, a quote unquote virtue of honor and integrity, um, as long as it feels like the right thing to do in that moment. But what will happen is a, a woman will ultimately prefer whatever her emotions tell her she needs on a moment by moment basis, and then she will adjust her truth for that outcome. And so what happens in, a, in this emotional fair sense then is generally a woman has grown convinced that the need she has to feel certain things, uh, usually some form of acceptance, uh, some form of being seen, understood, celebrated, chosen, et cetera, these are just some aspects, is, is not going to happen by her husband and it is happening by another man. And so then she starts basically kind of giving that energy to him instead because it feels good and so she's responding to his overtures by by replying right and maybe she desires not to have an affair of any kind but she's also being pursued and it, I think it's fair to say that in the feminine it's it's more about the boundaries that the that the men have than the women because even if a woman holds certain things to be true and certain desires she wants to avoid, um, or I'm sorry, certain outcomes she wants to avoid, certain outcomes she wants to have, she also will describe herself as being vulnerable to the man. Meaning women acknowledge that men can basically lead them away from their desires for certain things, including fidelity. And so this is why it's important, I believe, that men are um, encouraged to have better character because really infidelity always has a willing man involved um, unless it's a homosexual relationship. That's a totally different topic. So an emotional affair in this case is a woman giving energy outside the relationship and she's very conflicted by it. She's um, She wants to keep feeling good but she's also bothered that she is acting in a way that she knows is self-destructive to the relationship she has. So what you experienced from your wife um, was what we call gaslighting, what is known as gaslighting, which is you raise a legitimate concern, such as why are you, you know, texting another man in the middle of the night um, and 300 messages a day? That's not really uh, common or acceptable in a marriage relationship. And so why are you doing that? And then the woman will basically gaslight she'll she'll basically start shaming the man in some way and what it is is this is trying to get you off of the scent the scent being that she is doing something wrong because she does not want to come into a sense of accountability accountability is a very masculine attribute women do not enjoy being challenged because it makes them feel quite horrible and they don't feel, they don't enjoy accountability. So when we challenge them to be accountable by asking questions like, hey, what's going on here? Um, 
they can oftentimes, in this particular scenario, start actually turning it around and poking every insecure place we have. And they do this because it makes us stop. Because most men, um, as, as noble as they are, when they recognize, you know what, I haven't really lived uh, to a high degree um, of, of my own standard here. Like we recognize that, we recognize our faults, we recognize our errors. And so when somebody points them out, we get introspective, oh crap. Yeah, man, I haven't really lived up to my ideal here. And we stop. We stop looking at her. We stop looking at what she's doing. We stop really any focus on her poor behavior. And we focus instead on our own and our own shame. And this is what's really insidious about gaslighting is it's, it's really an awful thing to do. But you know, everybody tends to do this when they're shamed. When people are shamed or they're feeling shame, they tend to try to divert that shame to someone else as quickly as possible because no one likes to feel shame. And in an emotional affair, uh, with a woman involved anyway, the woman is going to move her shame to another person. Now, I've had relationships that people would characterize as an emotional affair, just, just to be honest. So I understand the other side of this, meaning when I felt a little bit pretty awful about um, the, the conflictedness I had in my own heart and feelings about you know, being married but having desire for another, another woman, um, when my wife would ask questions about it, I did the same thing. I would just make it all about her, all about her blame shifting, gaslighting, right? And, and I wish it wasn't this way, but I'm familiar with it um, to know what it's like. And it's really an attempt to get the eyes and gaze and focus off of my wrongdoing because I don't want to be seen like this, right? It's, it's bothering me. Um, so what do you do about this? when you have an energy leak in a relationship. <laughs> um, really, the best thing a man can do is erect very, very uh, solid and concrete boundaries for himself. And this could be hard because she's saying the whole time, oh, this is nothing, this is nothing, this is nothing. Look the other way, look the other way. Nothing to see here. That that guy will stop. He'll be, he'll be ashamed that he, that he considered that maybe this was going on. And he doesn't know what to do. Um, but he needs concrete boundaries, but he doesn't know the truth. And so what I try to tell men is, listen, there's two ways to have anxiety, to, to encounter the idea that your wife might be having some sort of inappropriate relationship. One is with an anxious mind, and one with is, is with a gut feeling deep in your gut. Most men, uh, pretty much this hasn't been wrong yet. If a man knows in his gut his wife is doing something she ought not, he's right. Uh, I haven't really encountered this yet. Every, every man, including clients and non-clients, who has thought in their gut, not with an anxious mind, but their gut, something is askew. Uh, that gut and, and our hearts both have intelligence. This is scientifically true. Your, your gut, your heart, and your brain all have intelligence. And when your gut and your heart are telling you, no, this does not feel right, you're usually correct. If it's just you imagining a scenario, your wife's home late uh, or isn't home and it's getting late and, and your mind goes immediately to, oh, she's probably out shagging some guy. Well, that's different. This is a, just an imagination running wild and that's usually a, a certain anxiety about the what ifs, but it's not really, there's no gut and, um, and heart response to it. And so I would treat those with suspicion, any kind of brain idea about this, but if you know it, deep in your gut and your heart, you're probably correct. And so knowing that you're probably correct, then you have to say, okay, what, I can't, I can't control what she does. I can't control where she goes with this, but what is in my control? What's under my control is me. And I am not going to give myself and my energy to a woman who is giving some of her energy somewhere else. And that's when you have to take pretty drastic action in some points. So a lot of times that's just saying, hey, you know, I, I believe this is going on. I am not okay with what's happening here. And so if you continue to do this, I'm going to move towards the next logical step that would take place if I was ending a relationship with somebody. And, 
and do that, right? That feels crazy firm to some people and she's gonna say, you're being insecure, you're being insecure. That's actually not true. The proof, the proof of this is when a guy relents and he backs off, she keeps doing it. She'll stop for a couple of weeks like you saw and she'll reconnect, okay? What needs to happen is absolute uh, clarity of person, absolute firmness. Um, not in an unloving way toward her, but in a loving way toward yourself. This is why we have to have a solid sense of our value and worth as men to where we say, you know what? I have lots of things I need to work on in life about myself. Sure, I have lots of insecurities I need to work through. However, that aside, I am worthy of being in a monogamous committed relationship with someone who wants to be in that relationship with me. Giving relationship energy to someone else is evidence that that's not happening. And so I refuse to participate in a relationship like that. And I'm moving myself away from it. Now, notice what I just said. I made no demands on the other person. I simply said that what you're doing is incompatible with me. And so I, owning me, am going over there, right? Now, when I start moving that way, now she actually has something she can respond to. You gotta remember the feminine energy is a responding energy. They are not initiating acting energy. And this frustrates men because we treat them like men. We think that she can just stop like water could come you know, flooding up out of a river and just say, oh, whoa, I see that you just redid all of your landscape. I'm just gonna back off and not flood you, right? That's crazy. That's not the nature of water, right? We recognize that water is a force that doesn't respect boundaries, and so we erect boundaries. Then we erect a berm to keep our, our property from being flooded. And this is what we have to do in our marriage. We have to set the boundary for ourselves, and that becomes the boundary of the rising water of feminine emotion that's going towards another man. If you don't put that boundary up, then you have the only other boundary your wife will run into is the boundaries of that other man. And if he is an insecure little weasel who loves getting feminine attention and loves sleeping with women to make himself feel like a man, that is exactly what will happen. No matter what the virtue is that that, that woman believes she has, at the end of the day, he can persuade and manipulate her right into the sack, and he will, right? So unless, unless that water hits a boundary somewhere, some man's boundary, it's not going to stop. And it's this guy's already kind of proven not to have the best boundaries in the world, right? Otherwise, he would be pushing your wife to return back to you. And instead, he's enjoying, you know, all of this attention. And maybe he has decent boundaries. I, I did in that case, meaning like my own boundaries eventually said to me, like, you know what? This is somebody's wife and it's not okay with me to do that. And so push, push away, right? But I think that's kind of an exception, to be honest. I think most men that are getting that kind of attention themselves have insecurity and it feels good. And very many of them will, um, will just take her, right? So a couple other tactical things happen here. And I know this is getting a long video, but this is a very difficult subject for a lot of men. And I want you to understand it. When you erect a very solid boundary and you head outside of the relationship, what a woman will do is she'll go one way or the other, okay? A lot of times she says, whoa, that's a hell of a lot. That's a big move. And she says to herself, do I really want to lose my, my family, my home, life as I know it for this guy? Is that really something? And so sometimes she immediately moves right towards the man because he's, she's actually found his boundary. And women are actually attracted to men with boundaries. Women respect men that know what they want and they're willing to act and they do act exactly according to what they want. The other thing that oftentimes happens is she'll move towards the other man. Now that guy has already proven to be a man without boundaries or very good ones. And when, when a woman says, oh, my husband is leaving the relationship, she has all this fantasy. Oh, now I can finally be free to do this stuff with this guy, right? And so she heads toward him and sometimes, but not all of the time, that guy says, whoa, 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 this was fun when it was just toying around. But if he's married and he has a relationship, now he's fa faced with, Am I really ready to live this truth? Am I ready to tell my wife and kids, hey, dad's having an affair and I'm going to like shack up and shag this other married woman. And that guy says, mm, maybe not. And he calls it off, right? So in a lot of these cases, 
the, the husband acting firmly has a good chance of really ending things. Uh, it doesn't always work out that way. And if it doesn't, you, you shouldn't want to be in a relationship with this woman anyway. She's already proven herself to have a lack of discretion and discernment and wisdom about what situation she's allowing herself to be in. So consider yourself dodging a bullet if that's the case. But really, if you want it to stop, you've got to head firmly in a direction away from your relationship. That doesn't mean it will ultimately end, but if you're not willing to dispose of a relationship that is fundamentally disrespecting and devaluing of yourself, then no one can show you value and respect because you're not doing it. All right, I know I said a lot there. Uh, I hope there's vigorous conversation about this topic in your post on Mentoring Men. Um, it's a great thing to talk about. If you're watching this video from outside of Mentoring Men and you wanna be part of that conversation, go to uh, www.mentoringmen slash community you can sign up, be a part of really robust conversations with a lot of men just like you, a lot of which are or have experienced emotional affairs. Many of them have found uh, recovery from that and restored marriages, and we'll see you there. All right, take care.